Let's look at combining inverse and forward trig functions where they don't match. So we have the cosine of the inverse sine instead of something like inver cosine of inverse cosine. Um, let's look at some examples of this. And uh, we're going to look at it both with re referring to the geometry, geometry of the unit circle, and then we'll also see how we can just kind of use a general triangle as well. They're both useful. So the cosine of the inverse sine of 1 fourth equals what? Well, algebraically, I really like to separate it out in a couple of steps. You might think we just need to calculate this first and then put it into the cosine. If we have a calculator, we can do that, but we lose a lot of the interesting um, features here. And so what we all we need to do is we just need to name the inside. Incredibly powerful, name something. Okay. If theta is our name for inverse sine of 1 fourth, then what, what that means is that the sine of theta is equal to 1 fourth. That's a very definite thing to know about the, the, an angle is the sine of theta is 1 fourth. We also know a little bit more. We actually know exactly what range theta has to be in. It be, be, needs to be between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. It needs to be in this part of the circle. That's what the simplest angles in the sense of the inverse sine. But right now, let's not worry about that quite yet. So sine theta equals 1 fourth. And that's a known fact. And what we want is cosine theta. And we've actually done this problem before. Given that a sine is known, we want the cosine, and we know something about the quadrants. That's exactly a problem from, uh, from a couple weeks ago, where we were first investigating these functions. Okay, And we, what we know is that Pythagoras is the key for that. So let me just give put the picture in about the right place. We want an angle whose height on the unit circle is about 1 fourth. And so it's about right here. We don't have to really draw this very accurately. We want to, want to get an idea. So this y is going to be 1 fourth. We know this is 1 if we put it on the unit circle. And so this is just going to be solved for by Pythagoras. And let's see, does it have to be exactly this, this shape? Yeah, pretty much, because this is the only place in quadrants 1 and 4 that gives a height of positive 1 fourth. And so this really is an accurate picture. So going back to the algebra, we just look at Pythagoras. I'll just keep it inside the display boxes here. We use Pythagoras, and we just know that x squared, that's the, the cosine, plus 1 fourth squared, let's put that parentheses, is going to be 1. And so x squared <coughs> is 1 minus 1 16th is 15 sixteenths. And so x, well, let's see. Let's be careful. Just from that algebra, we know it's plus or minus root 15 over 4. But, but we know we're in Q1, and so it's plus. And so x, oops, x is really just plus root 15 over 4. And that's cosine theta. We could have said cosine theta the whole time. x was just easier to write. Okay. So cosine theta is going to be root 15 over 4. And so that means that this guy, the answer to this guy, is root 15 over 4. It's a certain amount of work, but it's not actually anything new. It's exactly, if we just translate it in this, it says, I know the sine of a, of, of a mystery angle is 1 fourth. And I'm not going to tell you the angle, and we're not even going to try to figure it out. And we want the cosine of that angle. And Pythagoras is the key. Okay, and. It's nice that this quadrant made it positive. And I mentioned um, in class that it actually, for this particular kind of problem, it turns out to always make it positive. OK, now let's look at um, this one. And I'll do this in two ways. I'll do it on the unit circle, and this I'll, I'll do it on, a, on a, a triangle that doesn't happen to be in the unit circle. So inverse cosine of 2 thirds. So let's, let's start out the same way. Let's just name it. Theta equals inverse cosine of 2 thirds. And so cosine theta equals 2 thirds, and we want tan theta. OK, so that's a, a translation of the problem. And um, we know cosine theta is 2 thirds, and we know that it's between 0 and pi, because that's what it means to be a value of the inverse cosine function. OK, so let's see. So let's see, the cosine is 2 thirds, let's see, x, let's get it to where x is about 2 thirds, like that. Oh, I didn't let go soon enough. x is about 0.67. Okay, we don't need to do this for real. 
just gives it nice to have an accurate picture. Okay, so that's two thirds. Y is a little bit more. It looks like the slope's going to be a bit bigger than one. The Y over X. It's for the tangent. And let's see how that works. Well, we if we know this is two thirds and we know this is one, Pythagoras is going to give us this guy, and then we can calculate anything, including the tangent. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go back to the algebra. Okay, and so we're just going to say um, we know that x squared plus y squared equals 1. Here we know x, and so 2 thirds squared plus y squared equals 1. To get the other side of the triangle, y squared is going to be 1 minus 4 ninths, which is 5 ninths. And so y equals, well in general it would be plus or minus, let's be careful about that, root 5 over 3. And what is it? Let's see. Because we're in the inverse cosine, 0 to pi, we know it has to be quadrant 1 or quadrant 3. And in fact, here it's quadrant 1. And so it's really just going to be plus again. OK, so that's good. Now, that's not what we wanted. We didn't want the y value. That would be the sine. If this was a sine of inverse cosine, we'd, we'd have our answer. But our tangent, that's just y over x. And so we're almost done. And again, this is very, very much like problems you've done, where we have one trig function, we know some quadrant information, we want, we've actually done problems of the form, find all of five other trig functions. And this is exactly that kind of problem. And so this root 5 over 3 for y and 2 thirds, oops, let's put it this way, 2 thirds for x, the 1 thirds cancel, and we get root 5 over 2. Okay. Now, let's change it a sec for just a minute. What if this were minus? Put in parentheses just to be careful. What if that were negative? If that were a negative, then what would be true? You'd still have all this be true, and the minus actually would square away here, okay? Um, and the y would still be the same. So remember, the sign is actually turning out to be positive regardless, because that was just because of this guy. It had nothing to do with whether this was plus or minus. What would be different would be down at the final answer, because this would be negative, and you get a negative overall. That's true, because geometrically, that would be the case where we're over here at negative 2 thirds. Now, this doesn't show that, because it's just been calculating a length. But here, the x really is a negative 2 thirds. And we get a negative slope. Remember, tangent is the slope of that line, so it's negative. So that makes sense. Now let me show you though, let me let me go back, take the minuses out, just to make it a little bit simpler. Let me show you another method that's very popular. We don't absolutely have to put this on a unit circle. We could actually put it on just a regular triangle. And that can have some advantages with, for working with fractions, some very small advantages. Okay, So we just want to draw a right triangle with where this is theta, and the cosine theta is 2 over 3. Oh, okay. We can do that if we just make this guy, the adjacent, equal to 2. Hello. Um, it's just not liking me here. Um, I don't know why it doesn't like this. The label. OK, that's weird. I'm going to hide that label. And I'm just going to put it in his text. I thought I could put it in the label, but I don't think so. But make this equal to 2, and then make the hypotenuse equal to 3. OK. Now, the only thing you have to be careful of is we're going back to our original understanding of, of triangle trig, where the, uh, the cosine and sine are all about the ratios. If this hypotenuse is not 1, you have to be careful. It's all about ratios. Um, and you can't just say, oh, the cosine is equal to 2. That doesn't make any sense. Cosine could never be equal to 2. It's equal to 2 over 3. Uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. And then the advantage is sometimes that just allows you to work with fewer fractions. Okay, So in the alternate method, uh, not on the unit circle, here we have x equals 2, and uh, or like the adjacent, let's say, equals 2. Uh, I'm messing up the math mode here. Um, and the hypotenuse is equal to 3. So the opposite we get from Pythagoras, that's just going to be the square root of 3 squared minus 2 squared 
which is root 5. Surprise, surprise, root 5 is coming in. So this guy here is just going to be root 5. And now what's the tangent? It's root 5 over 2, opposite over adjacent. Okay. And so that's another way to do it. So tan theta is just root 5 over 2. Okay. So if you'd like to do that better, that's just fine. That's how most people do it, really. I like to see it on the unit circle because it's always great to relate to the unit circle. But we can always scale things up and have our hypotenuse be not equal to 1 as long as we pay attention to the right formulas. Okay. Now, let's, let's generalize this just a little bit. Um, actually, in another video, I'll generalize it. I don't want to make this one too long.